It's Friday, April 13th, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. On today's show, we spent a morning at Sturgis Library, we check in with Barnstable Recreation, and a big upcoming race for kids planned for Patriots Day. And Consumer Affairs has some updates for Harbor Ferry parking and tips to remember when planning special events. But first, let's start with some news you can use. The Cape and Islands in Southeast Massachusetts 16th Annual Heroes Breakfast was held this morning at the Resort and Conference Center in Hyannis. The 16th Annual event by the Red Cross was recognized individuals on Cape Cod, the islands in Southeastern Mass, who have saved a life, helped someone in need, or served the community in an extraordinary way. The class of 2017 included 25 heroes and Barnstable was well represented. Melissa Avarinos from West Barnstable, Mark Corliss from Hyannis, Austin Davis, Hyannis, Lieutenant Thomas, Landman III, Katua, and Jake Avery, our own Town of Barnstable lifeguard. Construction season continues here in Barnstable. This is the latest wor road work update for Route 28, Falmouth Road, near Beers' Beza Way. The next phase of work will begin Tuesday, April 17th, and end Friday, April 20th. Starting Tuesday, April 17th, the southbound lane of Beers' Way will be detoured at the intersection of Route 28 and Beers' Way. Traffic will be directed east on Route 28, then directed southwest down Wal Walton Avenue. The end of the detour, detour will occur as traffic migrates back to Beers' Way. Traffic to local businesses will be allowed to access. This detour will continue through Friday, April 20th. The northbound traffic along Beers' Way will be minimally impacted. Traffic during construction operations will be delayed and motorists are advised to seek alternate routes to avoid the construction work. The work hours will be between the hours of 6.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. As always, please slow down and use extreme caution when traveling through the road construction areas and detour routes and follow posted safety and detour signs. Sturgis Public Library is a hub of activity for the young and the young at heart. I sat down with Corey Fahrenhoff a couple of weeks ago to learn more about a creative writing program and some of the many events planned for this spring. Hi, we're at the Sturgis Library today with Corey Fahrenhoff. Hi, Corey. How's it going? Um, nice to have you here today, Paula. We appreciate it. Uh, Tell so us a little bit about Sturgis Library and what you do here. Yeah, so I am. Um, I'm recently work. I recently started working here. I've been here for about eight months now. I'm the new uh, Adult Services and Reference Librarian. I am the guy who's in charge of the genealogy section, uh, all reference questions. I'm the guy who orders all the fiction, uh, the large print, the mysteries, the audiobooks, and uh, fiction is basically my realm here. Um, I am also in charge of doing all the programming. Uh, all the advertising, a lot of the outreach, and essentially working between all the other staff members and making sure that our programs are set the way we want them to be. And you yeah. still have time to read. Oh yes, read lots and lots of books. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what's going on at Sturgis. Uh, lots of exciting programs and events. Yeah, so I mean recently I got a grant through the Arts Foundation of Cape Cod, which was uh, really kind of them. Uh, it's enabled me to create this creative writing class that's ongoing right now. Um, the class itself is currently filled, unfortunately. We have 24 people in it and a wait list of like 15 people. Um, but in accordance with that, we're also doing different readings and lectures uh, based on the class itself. Um, the next one that's coming up that's open to the public is Krista Romanofsky is going to be reading uh, May 2nd at 7.15. Krista is both a fiction and poetry writer. Uh, she's right now one of the Providence, Provincetown Fellows in fiction. Other cool things we got going on here in the near future is we have uh, Learn to Play Ukulele. Um, it's going to be an all-ages event on April 18th from 2 to 4. It's free. Uh, this woman named Julie is going to be coming, and she brings a fleet of ukuleles. She brings like 25 ukuleles and just like hands them out to people. Uh, so that's going to be fun. Um, we have a Stella's Valentine's presentation with Greg Roberts on Tuesday, April 17th at 6 p.m. Uh, we have one that I'm really excited about that I always enjoy. We have uh, one of our trustees, Greg Williams, who is a retired judge from over at the courthouse. When I point this way, I'm pointing over to the courthouse, which is over there. <laughs> uh, he's been doing these true crime presentations that That's like fun. bring a crowd of like 45, 50 people. And he's super animated and he's very intelligent and very funny. So his next one is called Decades Before Borden, 
the Fall River scandal of the bad mill girl and the minister. And it's a Greg Williams true crime presentation, May 8th at 6.30. And then the last really big event that I want to talk about is our Family Functifest with Functipus, right? <laughs> it's an awesome band name for an awesome band. They're a Cape Cod funk band. They're going to be playing on Saturday, May 12th at 5 to 7 p.m. Functifest is going to be at $10 per person. Children under 10 get to go free. Uh, $10 covers food, beverages, the music, and there will be a silent auction to raise money for Sturgis here. Um, things that some people don't know about the Barnstable Libraries is we are uh, usually, actually we all are 40% uh, town funded and 60% uh, privately funded. So events like this go to help support paying for book purchases, programs, general funding, um, our wages and it's awesome to see how much of our community comes out to these events and how much support we get from everyone so well that just sounds like a great lineup for uh, uh, spring if it ever does actually sprung here on yeah, Cape right. Cod. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit more you've got a couple of reading challenges out there you've got a genre challenge that we've noticed yeah um, so uh, s since I started working here I've noticed I mean it's not just noticing here it's most people in their reading habits they get very anchored into like what they like. They're like, I read this, I read true crime, I read histories about World War II, and I read spy novels. Or I read cozy mysteries, I read uh, me cooking memoirs, and nautical tales. I don't know, you have your, your genres you go to, and most people don't often venture out of that, which is sad in a lot of ways, because there's so much good literature coming out all the time, and there's so much good literature that's been written over the years that you just wouldn't encounter if you limit yourself to that. So we started the 2018 Sturgis Reading Challenge, which is 20 books. Um, they, there's 20 different categories. There's read a romance novel, read a detective novel, read uh, a true crime novel set in Massachusetts, no, in New England, read sci-fi, read fantasy, read a YA book that's come out in the last five years so you can't read Harry Potter or Wrinkle in Time, the ones that everyone goes to read graphic novels, and the list goes on and on, and if anyone's interested in joining up for it, we s have it going the entire year. Uh, it's basically you fill out your sheets, uh, you come to us, and we put all the names in the hat, and the winner gets a $10 gift card to our book sale. Great. So that's that that's one. A lot of fun. Yeah. So there's new books out, there's new sections in the library. Give us a little indication of what's like really new out there right now for yeah. readers and uh, young and old. Okay, so um, besides the usual tried and true books that we buy, like the James Pattersons, the Stuart Woods, Nora Roberts, all the, the really go-to writers that everyone seems to request fairly frequently, uh, we've added a new graphic novel section, um, which we are slowly building. It's, uh, it's something that you have to like, consider really intent intensely when you're purchasing graphic novels because there are so many coming out all the time. and. I have to think about our patrons here and what they would like the most and what will circulate best. So we're trying graphic novels as also a way to br bring in a younger crowd, which hopefully they'll turn out well. We're in the first month of it, so I don't have much data to give you on it, yeah. but that's happening. Um, as I said, I order the fiction, and I am also very involved in the literary fiction movements going on right now and a lot of cross-genre movements because I'm also a writer. So I'm very in touch with what is hip right now, what is going to be the award nominees for this year. Like last year, you look at books like Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng or Sing and Buried Sing by Jesmyn Ward, and those have been on hold for like almost a full year now, uh -huh. <laughs> like hundreds of, hundreds of uh, reservations on them. And so it's kind of about also finding what is going to be the next book like that. And right now, in American Marriage, uh, is an Oprah book, Oprah book club book or whatever. So that'll probably be the next one to take off. But I'm always considering other books that'll look like that. Um, a few titles that come to mind are uh, The Hunger by Alma Katsu. But I mean, if you come in and you look at our recommendation section, I always have at least five books that I've really enjoyed or I think are gonna be the big books of the year. So if you're ever wondering what should I read next, you just come in and talk to me and I kind of live for those moments when patrons are like, hey, I'm looking for a good literary novel that's got noir elements and a female protagonist. And I was like, all right, cool, I'll <laughs> point you in that direction. 
Excellent. So how can people learn more about uh, Sturgis and the things that are going on here? Uh, they can either follow us on Facebook. They can go to our website at sturgislibrary.org. I think it's .org. Uh, they can subscribe to our monthly newsletter. They can swing by and just be like, hey, what's going on? And we'll just tell you. Um, we send all of our flyers and advertisements out to most of the local libraries. We post them on Cape Cod Times, Brunswick Patriot, um, a couple of the other local uh, news outlets. So there's, there's a lot of advertising going on. So hopefully, if you are looking around, you'll see something that we're doing. So. Excellent. Well, it sounds like it's a happening place. Uh, right here in the village of Barnstable. All right. Thanks, Corey. You're very welcome, and uh, thank you for having me today, Paula. Thanks. This is Corey Farrakoff, and we're at Sturgis Library. Monday is the big Boston Marathon, a dream race for some runners. The passion for running can start very young, and Tim McGrath and Barnstable Recreation have an annual Patriots Day race for kids that just might ignite that lifelong desire to run. Let's get those kids up off the couch. With me today is Tim McGrath from Barnstable Recreation. Welcome, Tim. Thank you for having me. So you're the uh, Aquatics and Program Coordinator over at Barnstable Rec, and you've got a couple of things that you're uh, working on for everybody to do for spring this year, but the big one is coming up uh, this Monday, which is the Patriots Day Race. Yes, it is. Yeah, I can't wait. So this is a race for kids. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the race? Great. So we have, uh, we have three divisions. There's uh, Pre-K, which they do a quarter-mile fun run. Then we have uh, kindergarten to third grade, which do one mile uh, around the track. And then we have a uh, four to seven age group when they do, uh, I think it's a mile and a half loop. Where they go around the track, then they go out into the field, and then they come back. Oh, what fun. Yeah. So pre-K, that's got to be kind of fun. Uh, what is that, uh, three, four, or five-year-olds? Yeah, yeah. So that's <laughs> the, that one's always a, How do you a blast. corral them? <laughs> it's like... Uh, <laughs> It's kind of like herding chickens. <laughs> <laughs> herding chickens, I like that. And then the next age group was the like first and second graders? Kindergarten to third grade. Kindergarten to third grade. So there's probably some runners in that uh, age group already, right? Absolutely, yeah. We, uh, we get a lot of kids that are in. Uh, we, I, I run a spring running program. Okay. Um, so I get a lot of kids that are in that, that we're, we're building up their endurance. So there are quite a few good runners in that group. Right. So let's talk a little bit about kids' fitness and getting a kid into running, because there's a lot of pitfalls and perhaps injury uh, areas that we want to be concerned with when we start kids running, right? Absolutely. That, uh, for instance, in, my, in that running program that I was just speaking of, uh, we spend 30 minutes stretching, uh, b both before and after, that it's just so important right. to, to make sure your body is ready to, to run, even at a young age. That okay. when you're working out, you want to be taking care of your body because injuries can happen and they are preventable. Right. So those uh, exercises can include the hamstrings and the muscles that they're using to run. Mm -hmm. Gets them in the t kind of the frame of mind to, to use those muscles. Absolutely. Great. So the race is Patriots Day. What time does it start? We have so those three divisions. Uh, they start at nine, nine thirty, and ten, and okay. we'll have registration. Uh, they can register at the HYCC or they can register in person at the race uh, about half an hour before the race starts. Okay. And it's held at the Barnesville High? Yes, at the Barnesville High School track. So that's kind of fun for the kids, right? They're on the high school track. Do, do they get all wide-eyed and <laughs> looking around? I'm sure some of them do, yeah. That it's a, it's a great opportunity and we're, we're thankful to be able to use that. Right. Uh, is this a free event? Uh, it is not free, uh, okay. but with registration they do get a, a Barnesville uh, Recreation Patriots Day race shirt nice. with registration. So that's right. Fun. So there's got to be uh, first, second, and third places. I we guess we do hand out tro some trophies at the end of the race, uh, and every participant gets a medal as well. So it, it's a good event. It's a lot of fun. So talk a little bit. You must be a runner, right? So talk a little bit about getting those uh, medals at the end because those are collectibles. Uh, you get them for the Boston Marathon when you run any type of event. What, what significant is that medal? Well, you know, it just uh, it shows the perseverance to finish the race, whether it's your first race or if, it, if it's a marathon, that uh, you know you worked hard to to go through that race and, and complete it. So it's a, it's something to be cherished. Excellent. 
How do parents prepare? So they've got a, a young child that's thinking about running. Mm -hmm. uh, bones are still developing. Things are still happening in their bodies. How does a parent uh, help a child prepare to start running? Uh, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is always stretching. That okay. uh, before you do any sort of athletic activity, stretching is, is the key to get, that, get your body ready that any time you're going for any kind of a workout, you're going to be shortening those muscles up and shortening those joints, so you want to stretch them back out to help your body recover. Okay. And can they start at any distance, or do you start them at slower dis uh, uh, smaller distances and then work them up into the mile or two-mile distances? Absolutely. Um, I would, you know, whether you want to pick a, a distance or a time, um, if you're going for a distance, if you're trying to aim for a mile, run for a quarter mile if you have to walk, walk a little bit and then run, but finish that mile that that's how you really gain endurance is by completing a certain distance or a certain time that whether you're going for again a time or, or distance that you right. complete it it might not be running the whole time but do the workout for that for excellent X right. amount of time or X distance. So that that interval kind of training really does work. Is that you can walk for uh, two minutes and then run for a minute. Walk for two minutes, run for a minute. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Is the <laughs> interval. <laughs> I said, well, you know, I think I'll run this, and then I'm like, yeah, maybe not. So, um, so Patriots Day race uh, starts at ten o'clock. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. <laughs> And they can register at the HYCC yep. or the day of race. Correct. There's three different divisions that kids can race. Uh, everybody gets that uh, cherished me uh, medal at the end, and there's trophies, yep. and the race day t-shirt. Absolutely. How cool is that? And that's a day off from school, and it starts the vacation week. Yeah, it's a great way to kick off vacation week. So you're going to be busy. I hope so. <laughs> All right. Well, it was great to talk with you, Tim. And again, the uh, race is at the Barnesville High School, and it starts at 9 o'clock, and it's Patriots Day, so it's April 16th. Thank you. Thank you. Planning a special event in the town of Barnstable? Wish there was a place to park while you wait to pick up Grandma from the Highline Ferry? Liz Hartgrove Consumer Affairs Supervisor updates us on both topics today. Weddings, barbecues, all sorts of special events happen through the spring, summer, and fall here in the town of Barnstable. With me today is Liz Hartsgrove, who is the Supervisor for Consumer Affairs. You're going to tell us what you need to do to be able to do any of these things on town property. Yes, I am, Paula. Excellent. <laughs> so, special events. Yes. Um, the town does have some properties yeah. uh, throughout uh, the area that you can hold an event, um, several different types of events. Yep. Um, so, why don't you give us an indication of what types of events people can have on these properties? Sure. Um, you can basically have a family barbecue all the way up to a very large event such as the Boston Pops coming by, uh, Pops by the Sea coming and holding such a long event that it prep time and everything to up to the big day. So um, yeah, it can be anything, but you start at the town manager's office and um, just get a sense of what's required. There's a, um, a list, a, a form that you fill out, and then it takes you through the process of getting sign-offs from all of the uh, triggered types of departments and, and committees and things. So, um, and then we let you know what's required, such as if you need extra bathrooms, if you need a uh, special entertainment license, or any of that kind of, you know, even food service permits. Um, so those are, uh, it's a good thing, and, and um, yeah. So those types of permits, so let's just walk uh, folks through. The people don't always understand that mm. if you're going to have music, yeah. you need that special licensing and permit to, to have music at your event. That's correct. There are certain actual parameters, and even right. when it's not on town property, special events actually, there's certain triggers for it. Um, if there's no charge, then sometimes the permit isn't required. But we always require you to go talk to the, the board or committee or the department to let uh, so you, they can ask the questions. You can 
give that information out, and then they will determine what is required and what's not, and they will help you through the process and hold your hand through it and make sure that you're in compliance when the time of the event occurs. Okay, yes. and these events can really literally include anything on some of the, uh, obviously not town property, but some of the properties like uh, the Hamlin's Purgis, Burgess Park yeah. or out in Sandy Neck. I mean, there's all sorts of different places that yep. you can hold events. That's correct. And even on private, like I said, even private properties, right. um, even a licensed establishment that might even have alcohol, such as a restaurant that's licensed here in the town, right. um, they might not have certain types of entertainment permitted on the establishment. So it's always okay. best to come check at 200 Main Street and just see what they are licensed for and okay. if that actually works with the um, the thought process of where you want to go and take your event to. So Okay. Well, yeah. it is the season. And it uh, is. You know, yeah. the green is uh, going to be, uh, you know, crowded at some point in time yeah. as we start to have more events on the green. There's music out there in the summertime with citizens yeah. as well as pops. Um, Absolutely. So my, again, my suggestion is start with the town manager's office. Okay. They have the calendar of what is already scheduled there, especially yep. in consideration that we have an arts and cultural coordinator who does events already on the green as right. well as even the bid. The business improvement district has yep. family events that are normally regularly scheduled throughout the summer. Right. So if you're going to be scheduling an event or want to plan an event on the town green or even Asselton Park or any of the really popular areas that attracts a lot of um, walkers and people mm -hmm. to participate, it is best to start with the town manager's office. Excellent. So now we've got an event. <laughs> oh, now we need parking. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so the next Next topic that we're yes. going to kind of talk about is everybody's favorite subject here on yes. Cape Cod as well as uh, Hyannis yeah. is parking. And you've got some some kind of updates to uh, yeah. parking down at the harbor. Yep. Um, so let yeah. us know. Is there a place to park? There is. There is. And actually, even backtracking back on the special events, sure. this year we have started um, implement, uh, offering a special events parking permit for the vendors and the organizers. So they have a dedicated space that they pay for. It's $15 for the day. So they okay. wouldn't actually um, be triggered by the actual time limits. Okay. So it allows them to park longer than, let's say, they want to park at the Town Hall lot or at Ocean Street lot. Um, so it's close to the where their event is, and they need to have their trailer or whatever. It's $15 for the whole day, each vehicle, and this allows them to have a space so their vehicles are close to them so they can go back, get more supplies if they need to, or whatever. So okay. th that is a new thing that we are offering this year. Um, and then when you have participation and people coming to your event, yes, parking is a big deal. Um, so. We have uh, maps online that peop help people assist them where they can park. And if special events actually want to um, have special maps created for them, we are able to assist. The parking management oh, that's program. A great service. Yes. So we work with GIS and uh, the arts and cultural department, and we form different types of maps depending on what type of event is actually there. Um, but down at Bismore, uh, new this year is a 15-minute waiting period uh, parking area dedicated for people who are waiting for their loved ones to come off the boat or go depart on the boat and go over to the islands. We've had a lot of uh, public safety concerns and um, this is something to hopefully mitigate some of those issues that we've had in the past. And so we have nine dedicated spaces. They start, um, the whole program begins on the 20th of April next Friday and um, yes yeah, so th it's available to anyone uh, including taxis especially taxis mm -hmm. and those that are waiting to pick up or um, so we do encourage though if you are going to be waiting longer than 15 minutes to go pay for parking in a in an available space down there or find an additional location further out and then wait where you're um, and then come back in 15 minutes when you know that it's going to be closer to the mm -hmm. time of arrival almost like those cell phone lots at the airports now. Exactly. Or like um, I'm from the Washington DC area yeah. and they call them kiss and ride where you kiss oh. your loved one and then the person goes and rides on to wherever <laughs> like they're going to embark. So um, yeah, so it's a really wonderful opportunity that we can partner with Highline and the businesses and try to be able to um, control some of the, uh, you know, the, the, I don't know, the, the 
I don't know. It's, well, it's yeah, the safety. It's just, to, it's to, really, to be honest with you, is, yeah. is, you know, having a, an enormous amount of pedestrians with luggage yeah. and children and strollers and wheelchairs, having a, a dedicated area for them is just a, a, a really great thing to, to keep people safe. Absolutely. And also with the active harbor, with the fishing community there, with the transportation, the boats and the... And the um, the trucks picking up the loads it's it gets to be quite crazy <laughs> well thanks so much Liz thank that was a, a great update on uh, parking is like I said yeah. one of those things that you know everybody wants to know how where when are we going to be able to park and mm -hmm. uh, those special events are uh, just about ready to start I, I know think. it's wonderful isn't it great yeah. happy spring thank you Paula you too Now let's have a look at our community calendar. The Tilden Arts Center at Cape Cod Community College will present Mark Holman and Greg Kotis' Urinetown, the musical, winner of three Tony Awards. Evening performances will take place at 7.30 on April 13th, 14th, 20th, and 21st. Matinees will be offered at 2 p.m. on April 14th and 21st. All performances will be held on the main stage of the Tilden Arts Center. For more info and tickets, go to www.capecod.edu. Artists and Muses is on display at the Barnesville Town Hall through April 20th. This exhibit features portraits, figure paintings, drawings, and sculptures in a wide range of styles and mediums. The public is invited to attend a reception in the Town Hall hearing room to meet the artists on Friday, April 13th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. For more information on this program, call Melissa Chartrand at 508-862-4767. Program information is also available at www.artsbarnstable.com. We hope you'll join us again Tuesday for highlights of the Red Cross Heroes Breakfast, a conversation with Cape Cod Chamber CEO Wendy Norcross about a newly formed coalition for a bridge fix and an update from Beacon Hill from Representative Will Crocker. To all our Barnstable residents running the Boston Marathon, we leave you with this Irish proverb. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. I'm Paula Hersey, and thank you for watching Barnstable today.